lovely. Cosy. <laughs> Oh no, I think it's going to be back here. So it's coming down this side, but this side is compromised. A sphenoid and hold. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Okay, so just having a feel into your back, first of all. Those lower thoracics. Round and round. It'll help with your pelvic alignment and your neck. Soft, mobile, and then down from the kidney and adrenal gland, activating India's own healing mechanism. Actually activated from India's own body. Lovely. That's good. The head wants to turn with it. So how's things? Yeah, good. I am struggling a little bit more with external stress because I've got a more stressful job. Um, obviously still got two young kids, so that's a lot. But um, I passed out. Everything's normal, but like iron is low. But, but there's nothing bad going on. A bit worn down by everything, really. So trying really hard to spend some time doing some self-care mm, but you do you know I try you come here yeah and you do your yoga yeah. and fitness mm -hmm. uh, you have some downtime I do but maybe it's encroaching on those quiet times I understand yeah so in the blood test did they check for b12 they didn't they were supposed to and they forgot okay. <laughs> so I started taking some b12 supplements okay and iron supplements to try to build that up right but yeah. And also, did they check your blood pressure? Uh, they did. Blood pressure was fine. But oh. um, I part the when I passed out, it was the first day of my period. So it could have been that my blood pressure had dropped on that day. Yes. So I'm already taking magnesium and zinc to try and manage cramps. But who knows? Okay. All right. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> yes, and, fingers um, crossed. But was this out of the blue or have you been getting like little flashing lights and things not before? That, I mean, I get them all the time. So oh, I, okay. yeah, it was not an unusual thing for right. me to. I, I've always had traditionally blood pressure on the lowish side. Yeah. So it could easily have been that. Mm, mm, I'm similar. Yeah. Okay. Well, look after yourself and do, yes. I mean, hopefully these supplements will help. Hopefully, yeah. And Easter holidays coming up. Exactly. Okay, so I'm going to give you a core therapy today. Lovely. And we'll see what comes up. We, yeah. It can be different every time. And it yeah. just keeps me um, as close to me as I can be. So even when things are kind of going crazy, if I come here, it kind of just brings it back and goes, you know, oh, yeah, so your neck's aching just here. I'm like, yeah, it is. I go home and I feel really tired and I have a nice sleep. And the next morning I wake up and have a bath. I'm like, actually, I'm I'm OK now. And I okay. feel it's more about like maintaining functional movement and yeah. mobility and comfort because mm. when you're busy you don't always notice discomfort and areas that are getting weak mm. and then you kind of point them out and I think oh yeah well she was saying that that was tight or weak so then in my yoga practice I, I bring that in and it, yeah and then I when the next time I come it's something different I'm like well at least I fix that last thing so yeah. and it's like a yeah it's like a little MOT of like oh this is what you need to think about next so yeah. it's really helpful okay. <laughs> On the other hand, it does sound like I always pick out all the things that are wrong. Well, no, uh, because it's like, <laughs> it's going, oh, and that's much stronger, and this is much stronger. Lovely. Well, let's see what comes up. Yeah. Okay, just going to put the couch up a little. And hold. You know what I'm going to say. And hold. And a leg. And hold. Nice and hold good holds two together and hold little on the arm and hold good okay oh no i think it's going to be back here let's try it again and hold mm, rock solid so just a little on the left i don't think it's normally left is it no i think it's normally right Oh, having said that, last time was left. Yeah, okay. Right. Taking care of my one-year-old nephew. Oh. around on my left hip. Oh. Okay, I'll have a look at the hips first, I think. Let's just see their alignment. Clavicle. 
ribs looking good a little bit down here okay let's see what they're telling me pushing you around arm up and hold oh yeah okay so it is this is down that side and hold good and hold and hold oh yeah okay so it's actually the right hip itself but they're angled and hold yeah so it's coming down this side but this side is compromised it's probably some pressure some torsion on it so when i do the tween r i'll have a look around the back of that hip as well you're not getting any groin pain here it's quite tight yeah so, yeah. yeah okay are you generally or just at the moment um Generally, I tend to be, but I'm particularly tight at the moment. Yeah. Okay, two fingers on your pubis symphysis, that bone dead center, and hold. Nice. Okay, so good. It's not compromising your PS. And then, um, can you do a ballet for me? Perfect. Yes. Other leg up, and hold. Nice. A little bit higher, and hold. And as high as you can, and hold. Good, you're holding those fine. So the right hip is happy opening in those three angles. Let's try this side and hold. Good. And hold. Oh, dipping a bit. Okay, so this is that right hip opening and hold. Okay, good. Okay, it's just that middle part with the hip opening on the right. Update my notes. So, ACIS right and down on the left and then ballet mid right let's have a look at your contralateral so right arm left leg and hold nice and hold good okay joints are okay and um Hmm, I'm thinking of cranials because of you passing out. Can you put your hand to the top of your head? Give me an arm and hold. Okay, you can make a line and hold. Mm, it's not perfectly strong. Okay, so that's the sagittal suture. First of all, we did the parietals. Then can you do your temporals just round your ear, not on your face? And hold. Perfect. Oh, okay. And hold. Fine. And then two fingers next to your eye, a sphenoid, and hold. Yeah, I'm not surprised because it's um, pituitary that affects the sphenoid, vice versa. And hold. Okay, so it's just on your right. Let me just, uh, left. I'm just going to update these as we go. So, that one and that one. Those were okay. And then um, sphenoid was just on the left. So we're going to do um, a moustache, the maxilla, and hold, and the mandible, and hold. Good. And then a zygomatic on the cheek, and hold. A bit shaky, some are worse than others. And then on the other side, and hold. Okay, right. I'm definitely going to be doing some cranials with you. Oh, and then the occipital. And hold. Good, that's fine. And um, nasal. And hold. Good. Frontal. And hold. Good. Okay, uh, if you don't mind putting your finger in your mouth, just that bone behind your front teeth, palatines, and hold, good, and then two fingers under your chin, hymoid, and hold, oh, no, okay, right, so it's just a few that stand out, but most of them were fine, so um, palatines were good, occipital, yes, Zygomatic, no. Sphenoid, no. Mandible, maxilla, yes. Nasal, yes. Okay. Uh, oh, I know, TMJ. Just put two fingers on the hinge. 
of your jaw and hold that's all right and the other side and hold that's all right yeah yeah that's good okay how's tummy digestion okay at the moment, yeah. yeah yeah okay if you want to turn over <laughs> all heated as well okay so bend a knee for me raise the knee up and hold nice and the other side and hold good so that's a really good sign so that's quite a key test that tests the glute maxes and actually yes they tell me about the glute max but if they bilaterally weak, it tells me about this little bone here, the C2. So the C2 is obviously in the right position at the moment. Um, if you could bend your knee again, but keep it on the couch, I'm going to try and push your heel back to the couch and you're going to hold strong up here and hold. Nice, really good. That's testing the sacrum and hold. Lovely, really good. No movement at all. Okay, so just having a feel into your back, first of all. So I'm particularly working into the iliac with one hand on the front of the hip there and shifting it round to try and relieve that torsion that when I did the kinesiology noticed that the left hip was lower at the front and then working round the pelvic girdle on the sacroiliac edges the edges of the sacrum here where it binds with ligaments to the pelvic girdle i'm just relieving any any twisting and torsion there making sure that the pelvis is aligned correctly so from the sacrum to the iliacs to the pubis symphysis joint at the front and all of those ligaments that are on the outside and internally in the pelvic girdle to help support and balance the whole pelvis in a correct manner. And then of course the spine itself, ensuring that each vertebra gives, it has a softness to it, a bounce. And if not, I know that there's some tension there. And then that tension will be stopping correct blood flow and therefore chi, life chi. But also it will be potentially creating a congestion and uh, also a, a stagnation, stagnation of blood and life. And that will be stopping the messages and correct circulation to a certain part of the body, depending on where, which vertebra is misaligned, fixated. So it tends to feel there's a little bit of tightness there, but not too much up the neck. And then again here, 
just above the bra line. It's good at the lumbar. Nice swinging here, all separating, beautiful. And then round the side of the sacrum, a little bit tight, but only because the glutes are tight themselves. So I will do some glute max relieving exercises. Then gonna come round the other side, see what the right side tells me. It can be quite different, right side to the left. Quite interesting. So this is good, creating a good bounce here. The spine responding well. Again, some tightness in the glute max. Pressing on the top of that sacrum, those wide lumbar vertebras, in order to push them down and get them to separate, move individually. Yeah, a little bit of tightness here. So this is just, again, above the bra line. Now on the right side. So to relieve this, I'm going to do a bit more on the upper back, starting off with a wing stretch. Loosening the arm first, supporting deltoid shoulder point, bending the arm in, letting it soften, gripping that scapula and giving it a nice rotation. Not just in a circle, but almost down as well. It's got this lovely angle to it. Just hoping that the shoulder gives and it helps relieve any tension to the spine. Lovely. Nice and loose. Putting quite a lot of pressure on there. And then over the other side, nice and loose. And letting it drop. And then creating some space under, underneath that scapula, picking it up, rotating, holding that angel wing round and round. Lovely, really good. That wing stretch will really help relieve those lower thoracics. And now a drunken walk, coming down with the heel of my hands assessing and checking and treating as I go all the way down to press against the sacrum which interestingly isn't necessarily straight down the back in one long downward vertical line it tends to come back on itself coming back from the small of the back the uh, lumbar area mainly it tends to come a little bit more horizontally after the small of the back. So when I'm doing this drunken walk and come down to the sacrum, I find myself being able to sit on a little chair there, little table, while I'm pressing, moving, softening up and bouncing that sacrum from side to side. I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on. <sighs> Lovely. 
lovely okay so India we're going to do some glute max stretches I'll just warm it up a little because it can be quite painful have we done these before um, I'm not sure okay okay so I'm going to put the heel of my hand to the very base of the spine and then putting my thumb out and I think we've got similar size hands because it needs to be about your hand size and coming out to this point here bending this knee if you can that's it I'm going to apply some pressure I'm going to start off with about a medium pressure and if you could slowly lower your foot to the couch You didn't feel that at all, did you? That's fine. Yeah, okay. So bend again. I'm going to go in a slightly different place. I'm going to apply more pressure. Okay, and again, more slowly. Was that absolutely fine? No, I felt that one. You, you felt it? Yeah. How much? Uh, like quite intensely? No, it was okay. It was, it was okay. okay. Okay, bend again. I'm going to use a slightly different place. This is on the edge of the sacrum, quite high up now. I'm applying quite a lot of pressure and slowly down. That was less intense. Than less. Okay, okay, we're going for another place. Up again. And less intense. Okay. You all right? You gritting your teeth? No, just breathing deeply. Yeah. Okay. You can breathe through anything. <laughs> she says I'm going to lose the leg and absolutely cannot breathe through it. <laughs> but you know, this will help so much. So it won't just help with your glute maxes. It'll help with your pelvic alignment and your neck. Okay, so one more on this side. And slowly down. You okay? Yeah. And then just relieve it off a little. I think you'll really benefit from that. Yeah. Right, we're going to do the same this side. So heel of hand to the base, thumb out. I'm pressing. You can raise your heel. And slowly down. Was that okay? Yeah, that was more intense on the other side. Really? Okay. Yeah, right side. And up again. This is quite high now. That one's okay. Okay. And again. That one's intense. Well done. Hang on a sec. Just relieve it off a bit. Okay, and again. You okay? You know you do yoga, you know the piriformis stretch where you're, on, you're lying on your back and you cross your knees over and you put your hand through the gap in your legs and you pull it forward and then if you need more stretch you just angle over inch by inch over. I think you need to do a bit more of those. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. What do you call that? Um, a figure four stretch. <laughs> A what stretch? A figure four. A figure four. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, 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 they do. Yeah. So that would, I think maybe do them every day and that will help relieve that. Yeah. Okay. So done that. Um, okay. Now go 
going to do a foot and leg repattern starting off with the big toe. If you were to see the body as a square of fabric with fibers, imagine pulling the square at its corner and that's the same as starting at the big toe when you're working on the body because any tightness, issue and pain will be felt all the way to a body's corners and by relieving the big toes first and then coming up the foot and up the leg, repatterning through the pelvis, working on the sacrum, how I'm going to next. It then has that lovely flowing action of relieving all of those cross fibers of the body. So actually the big toes are really important. <laughs> Years ago, my mother had sciatic issues and so badly that the sciatic nerve uh, was cut through with the, uh, the pressure as she walked and it made her have a drop foot and not be able to feel the first couple of toes, the big toe and next toe of, of her right foot. And so, unfortunately, she used to have to walk with a stick in the last few years. And it's all about that big toe, because she couldn't feel her big toe. It really affected the way she walked, especially on uncertain ground like cobbles. And, uh, and that's true for the body. If we can't use our toes individually, and things like yoga will get you to work your toes separately and massage will massage the toes individually and reflexology um, then it really has a big effect on the body so look after your feet guys and look after your toes what I'm doing here is actually starting on the neck you know reflexology wise this is the neck of the body so I'm working on India's left big toe and this will be the left back and side of of the neck and getting some warmth there getting some flexibility mobility making sure that it's loose and soft and it gives so important for the body to give so that when we trip or when we're unbalanced or supporting ourselves on one leg, whatever it might be, the big toe has a big part to play in that action. Really important. Now working on the scapula on the left side, giving it a little push, making sure it's warm, soft, mobile, and then down from the kidney and adrenal gland giving it a little stimulation and then down, smoothing, softening down to the bladder through the ureter. And then just anchoring into the pelvis, holding out and leg repatterning all the way to the side. Bouncing that pelvis, raising the opposite side of the pelvis, so in India's case her right side, and then some sacral fixation, just sorting out that angle of the pelvis, bringing it back down level again and aligned. And a beautiful sacral float. Hmm instilling some qigong activating India's own healing mechanism tuning into that beautiful gentle rocking action of the sacrum as
as it has the pulse of the cerebral spinal fluid as it comes through at sacral 2. So it wraps around the brain, comes down through the neck, all the way alongside the spine, as far as S2, wraps through and back up again. And that structure allows for a beautiful, gentle movement with the pulse of the cerebral spinal fluid. You know, the sacrum is our sacred bone. It's our pivotal point at S2. Sacrum tunes into our beautiful somatic state, allows us to feel grounded and whole. There's a lovely movement here and a warmth getting warmer and warmer. And sometimes a very minimal juddering action just as the cerebral spinal fluid is moving and powering through, making sure there's no congestion, no impingement. And then coming up to the cranials, having tested with kinesiology the cranials earlier, working on the occiput through to the temporals and up to the parietals. Lovely, a beautiful easing sensation. Okay, India, if you'd like to turn back over. lovely sensation of stretching, something we can't really do to ourselves. Lengthening, stretching, allowing for space. I'm guessing you'd like a warm towel. Yes, please. <laughs> Always cold. Would you like to go back up the couch about three inches?
legs are coming quite low down the back and I'm shoving the thoracics left to right to ensure there's some give and when I feel a bit of tightness I'm just pausing applying a little bit of pressure and with that pressure comes some qigong energy so that lovely warmth and reassurance facilitated by a touch but actually activated from India's own body neck release, bringing the fingers into a line underneath the occiput, raising, beautiful, lovely. So India's had quite a few of these now, nose just to completely let go and give in. It's the best way to be. Some people will try and bend their head back for me because they like the feeling so much they want to be there straight away. But it all comes in good time. And then letting it go, letting it go, lengthen, 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 lengthen. Breathe. Lovely. Just feeling each side of the neck. Being quite strong. And up again. Oh, lovely, lovely. And then I'm keeping my fingers in that line and the fingers are touching so that there's no gap between my hands and that will ensure that the, the gap in the spine between uh, the very top of the spine to the occiput is present quite often. A lot of people don't have a gap there because we've had accident or injury or repeated action that has shortened the spine and, and made our head very heavy, pushing it down on the top of the spine. So it's lovely to have a nice space, a bit of stillness there, nice. Turning the head to have a look at the spine with my thumb. Moving each of the seven, oh, little crunch there, each of the seven vertebrae separately. Yeah, it's, it, it's hurting a little bit, so I'm just going to give that a little bit of individual attention. Pushing it down with my thumb. up again, let's see what it's like. And supporting the head in the air, that really helps to have free movement of the spine so it's not impeded by the couch. It's better, it's not crunching, there's a little bit of a click there, but it's much better. Yeah, there. Let's see what happens if I check the other side. Fine. Good. Okay, and then working on the spinal processes, pushing them around. This can be quite sore. It's something that we don't normally do. Separate our neck vertebrae in the spine, we don't normally separate them, so having that done to you can be quite sore. It's got nice and rosy, that's a really good sign, shows the blood is coming to the area that it needs to.
and then spinal processes left side and just giving them a little test to see if they will bend round they will turn lovely that's good the head wants to turn with it but it is turning each one is turning on their own that's a good sign and then a final check all the way down to the T1, that knobbly bone at the base of the neck. Yeah, good, good, good. And of course, when our neck becomes tight and impeded and the vertebrae don't move separately, that really is one big reason why we get headaches because that will impede the circulation up to the brain, up to our nervous system, the glands, etc. It all needs to be free flowing. So I'm just bouncing each shoulder down while supporting the head to try and lengthen the, the shoulder length between the neck to the shoulder and that actually will relieve the neck as well lovely and now a little on the cranials so definitely want to be doing the zygomatic so zygomatic are the cheekbones and I'm just using the thenar muscle the heel near the base of my thumb the heel of the hand Hardly applying any pressure, just touching, tuning into the energy, the warmth and working out the alignment, just making sure that the energy here and the structure are aligned. It feels tight on the right hand side left feels very open, loose and open-hearted, the right side really tight, like a closed door. And we can't hurry these things, they will work in their own time. Enjoying that lovely, let it be attitude. It will come in its own time. There's no rush, no forcing. And it's starting to come. Beautiful, it's working, it's working. India's gone into a beautiful state of deeper breathing. That really helps with the energy, allowing no restriction and congestion, just a free flow. Free flow. Now working on the sphenoid. Each side of the eyes, the sphenoid bone, a beautiful, large bone within the cranials. And if you were to look at it on its own, if you were to take it out of the head and look at it, it would look like a moth, a big moth with eye sockets flying towards you.
And when relieving and releasing the sphenoid, it feels like flying a plane, like I'm holding the steering wheel of a plane and it can go in any direction. As I've explained before in core therapy when testing a walking mechanism and I test the pitch, roll and yaw. These are all the different wayward movements of a plane that also our body can do. And it's really important that when we're walking, our eyes are level with the ground. If our head is at an angle, maybe because the spine is conditioning it to be so, or maybe we're holding our fringe out of our eyesight, it has a huge effect on the workings of our body. It's not great. So our body in optimum position will be eyes level with the ground as we're moving, running, walking, standing. So maybe just check with yourself and make sure that your head is level and you haven't got a slightly lopsided gait. And this Qigong will help level the head, which can have a huge effect on the workings of the body. Maybe even causing it to faint if it's not correct. This will also have an effect on the pituitary gland and therefore the endocrine system. The release and messaging system of the hormones. Because the pituitary sits just above the sphenoid. And if the pituitary is misaligned or not working correctly, It's probably because, or one reason could be because the sphenoid is not in the right place. So sphenoid being aligned will help support the pituitary and help what we call milk it so that when we're walking it has that lovely massaging action on the pituitary gland. Lovely, that feels really good. <clears throat> Just update my notes, making sure I know where I am with India every time she comes. So I always write down what action I have done on the body and what came up in the kinesiology and what needs to be retested at the end to make sure it's now passing. So keeping your eyes closed, take a nice long breath. And sometimes at the end of a core treatment, clients will go to, into a beautiful somatic state of sleepiness. Hello, you can come in. She is, she is but... 
She's asleep at the moment. Yeah. If you would like to sit down. Yeah. So enjoying a few more breaths of sleepiness. Keeping your eyes closed and slowly taking a nice, long, big breath. And sending that breath all around your body. Sending your breath to your feet and your fingers, stretching out through all 20 digits, playing the piano with your fingers and toes. And then if you feel like it, circling with your ankles and your wrists. And then circling, rotating the shoulders. And then if you feel like it, bringing your arms up over your head for a nice whole body stretch. You, you okay? Yeah, really okay. So we're just going to retest a couple of things before you get up. Okay, so... Uh, can I have your left arm and your left leg and hold? Rock solid. Can I have a, a medium ballet on your, yeah, medium, so a little bit higher than that. Yeah. And hold. Brilliant. Okay, the other one was fine. Um... Can I do an asis? Yes, so it was down on this side. Give me an arm and hold, good. And it was your right hip and hold. Ooh, that's not happy. Let's just give that a little bit of extra TLC. Am I all right doing this? Yeah. Any soreness? A bit, yeah. On the front here, yeah, groin, I did wonder, yeah. Do you mind me doing this? I'll do some stretching and get hang as well. And that number four, whatever you called it. Yeah. Figure four. F figure four, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's just try that again. And hold. There's a little juddering there, but it's better than it was. Okay. Um, right, sagittal suture, parietal sphenoids. So can you make a line and hold, whole hand and hold, zygomatic and hold, zygomatic and hold, and left sphenoid and hold. Really good, lovely, sorted. I think you're going to feel better. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I love the warm bed. The warm bed's like the best bit. <laughs> and the warm blanket and your feet being tucked in. Yeah, they're the best bit. And it's so cute seeing you two together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm all bliss and he's ready for it. Look, she's smiling and everything. I know. Oh, oh. Oh, my dear, you missed her. Yeah, please. Okay.